Okay, so so I think we can um, I think we can start. Uh, Quinton has let me know that he's going to be running a couple of minutes late, but he will be joining us um, shortly. Um, okay. So as a um, just as a bit of uh, context for for the other people on the call. Um, so in the last uh, TOC meeting last week, um, the Dragonfly project uh, presented their uh, annual review, and um, and with the aim of potentially moving to uh, incubation stage from Sandbox. Um, what we're looking to try and do here is. Um, to, to help the talk. So the talk have asked us to, to provide some help in, in reviewing the project. And although Project Dragonfly isn't um, a fully, you know, a, a kind of like a, a natural storage project that was felt on the call, on the talk call, that um, it probably was uh, more storage related than anything else. So, so that's kind of like the context of, of why we're looking at um, uh, of, uh, why we're looking at Dragonfly. So with that, um, Alan, who's um, one of the Dragonfly maintainers, is going to be presenting. Um, so do you have a deck that you can share? Yeah, I, I, hear, I, can, I can share my screen and I have a slide here. Perfect. Okay. Um, and and just, for your, just for your knowledge, the, the um, session will be recorded and put on the SIG storage YouTube site, so we will, you know, use this as a um, we will use this Q and A session as well when to send the talk as as part of this. Okay, I think uh, it's okay for me. Yeah. Okay, let's start. Brilliant. And thank you everyone. Thank you, Alex, for arrangement for the meeting of the SIG storage and the Dragonfly team. Actually, uh, almost everyone of Dragonfly team is online. And uh, last time we do a Dragonfly incubation state review for the TOC uh, meeting. And the TOCs, they found that uh, we need to talk to the SIG storage. And uh, that's exactly which is introduced by the Alex uh, as a context. And uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Alan Sun from Alibaba Cloud. Actually, uh, I'm, I'm a maintainer of Dragonfly for almost uh, two years. And here is the Twitter name of Dragonfly. And uh, we will publish every news of Dragonfly. And we can, you can notice that. And here is a very brief description of Dragonfly. And, uh, Dragonfly, it is born in Alibaba at about uh, June uh, 2015. At the first time, it is focused on the file and the image distribution uh, in the Alibaba group. Uh, at uh, uh, November of uh, 2017, it is open source. Actually, at that time, Dragonfly has been a fundamental infrastructure in, in Alibaba group. Every month, it will distribute uh, about 3.4 PB data. And uh, at uh, about October last year, um, we tried to uh, redesign the roadmap of Dragonfly. And uh, actually, at that time, cloud, cloud native technology goes up very, very hot. So uh, the aim of Dragonfly uh, is becoming to be cloud native. Actually, at that time, we've already uh, been adopted in production users, uh, lots of production users. The number is up to about more than 20. And uh, we are very lucky to join the CNCF as a sandbox level. After, after joining the CNCF, uh, Dragonfly has been adopted in a variety of industries. And in the following slides, we will talk about the adoptions of Dragonfly. Uh, actually, and uh, uh, with the step of joining CNCF Dragonfly, integrated with uh, uh, Kubernetes ecosystem software very easily, and uh, it is a big help from the uh, community. 
and uh, we can later we will talk about integration of Kubernetes and uh, Prometheus and uh, Harbor and uh, uh, some other uh, software. And uh, last week we were, we we've already done the CNCF annual review. And in the future, uh, we try to adapt Dragonfly to more cloud scenarios like some uh, IoT scenarios, like some other technology areas. And uh, in uh, two months, we will do the GA rele release. Uh, everyone know at the first uh, phase of Dragonfly, it is uh, written in three languages, uh, Java, Python, and uh, Golang. Uh, after about a half a year's refactoring, Dragonfly has been now only in return uh, in Golang. Uh, and uh, in the next stage, we are hopefully, uh, hopefully we, we wish Dragonfly could be, uh, could enter the CNCF incubation label. And uh, the aim of Dragonfly is uh, image and uh, file distribution system in cloud native area. Uh, at, uh, at the first, we try to tackle the image distribution issues in the Kubernetes, in the CNCF uh, foundation. But actually, uh, Dragonfly can be easily used to uh, distribute fail, uh, generic fails uh, in your production environment. So just a couple of quick questions there. So um, would it be fair to say that the GA release is sort of scheduled for October time there? Uh, October, October last year. No, you said you said the GA release is, is due in a couple of months. So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. October of this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will we will GA release will be uh, October this year. Cool. And and am I, am I to understand that Dragonfly is is for all types of images, for all types of files, not not just images or containers, right? It's it's basically anything. Oh uh, yeah, basically and anything. Cool, thank you. Okay, thank you. And uh, later we will talk about uh, how to support the image distribution. It will introduce another uh, component, but without this component, it, be, it is also can be used to distribute file. And here are the features of Dragonfly. Dragonfly, uh, the most important features of Dragonfly can focus on three keywords. The first one is efficiency. You know, we provide the P2P based image distribution. The P2P features can improve the efficiency at uh, your, your skills, large skills, when you scale growth and uh, your, your image pooling, uh, the network bottleneck of your uh, image source or file source uh, can exist. And the P2P will take advantage of every node bandwidth, uh, network bandwidth, so it's clear it could help to improve the efficiency. Uh, in addition, it provides a passive CDN feature to avoid the repetitive downloads. So the first one, first, the first part is efficiency. The second one is flow control. Everyone knows that uh, in the container world, every node, maybe every node will, will bear some application workload. Uh, besides the workload, the image pooling workload still exists on the same node. Uh, and how to isolate from the application workload. Uh, for example, the disk I.O. and the network I.O. And the Dragonfly can intelligently regard this as an element to, uh, to judge where, where and when to, to, to download the task and uh, write the disk. So the task level and the host level net and the disk speed limit uh, could, be, uh, could be implemented in uh, Dragonfly. And uh, it will provide the disk and from the high uh, high uh, high I/O. The third part is the security. The security is that uh, super node will cache the files for the peer network, and uh, the the file on the uh, on the super node uh, we should try to encrypt it, uh, so so we can transfer the secure data among the network. Only the source has a uh, raw data, and uh, only the only the node has a uh, raw data, so it can guarantee the security of it. And the fourth part, uh, it's it's very easy and uh, it's very simple and easy to use. Uh, Dragonfly is non-invasive support. All 
kinds of container technologies. Um, the most popular one, the most popular one is Docker and uh, another CNCF graduation project, Container D, and uh, the, also um, the Punch Container, which is uh, open sourced by 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 Alibaba. These container engines can invasively use and Dragonfly to pull images. So the users can pull container images as usual. This is the feature of the Dragonfly. And here is a very brief introduction of Dragonfly's community. We have an incubation pull request on the GitHub of uh, uh, CNCF TLC repo. And uh, everyone can leave your comment if you have any thoughts on Dragonfly. And uh, last year, we already merged the sandbox pro request. Currently, we are very lucky to see Dragonfly project have more than uh, 4,000 GitHub stars. And, uh, and up to now, we have uh, 41 direct contributors of the ecosystem. Uh, we released uh, 11 formal releases, and the GA release will be at uh, October. Uh, and for the maintainer part, we have seven maintainers across four independent companies. And uh, the initial company is Alibaba Group. And uh, currently, and there are three more companies which produce uh, maintainers. Uh, these, three country, uh, these three companies are uh, eBay. eBay. Uh, eBay, they are using Dragonfly to distribute images. And, uh, and May2. Uh, May two and uh, Byte Dance, Byte Dance. Uh, these two, uh, both the two companies are in China. Uh, and uh, Dragonfly has more than fifty public adop adopters, which will be introduced uh, uh, later. And uh, we did not include the private one. We have more than three thousand three hundred members in the DinTalk um, developer groups, and the CI best practice passing. Uh, if you are not familiar with Dragonfly, here is a very brief workflow of Dragonfly to, to, to uh, illustrate that. Uh, we, can see, uh, we can see the right part of these uh, slides. Uh, you, we have a super node. Super node, we can regard it as a control, control part of the Dragonfly system. It will uh, try to catch the images from the registry it will try to catch the files from the from the source, and uh, it will schedule the downloading requests among the peer networks. Every node, every node, we have a container. We have a container engine. Every container engine, uh, uh, besides the container engine, we have agent, uh, which is a DF daemon. DF daemon is used to intercept the image pooling request, and. Uh, and uh, we are restrict a request to, uh, to send it to the dfget. dfget is a generic uh, agent on the node for the file distribution among the P2P net P2P network. So um, the component of Dragonfly could uh, uh, consist of three parts. The most important one is super node to, to, to control, to manage the system. And uh, the dfget is a generic uh, proxy agent on the node and the DF daemon, DF daemon is used to intercept the image pooling request. So these two, uh, these three components. Here is a, a very brief workflow. Uh, we can we can regard it as three, uh, six steps. The first one is that the container engine wishes to pull image from the DF get. And uh, it will send a request to the DF, DF daemon. DF daemon will intercept the request and uh, send another one to the DF get. And the DF get will send the pooling request to the supernode. Oh, oh, please remember that uh, the P2P network uh, wishes that all the nodes uh, at the same time they trigger a same image pooling request at the same time. Uh, at the second part, the uh, DF get will send the polling request to super node. The super node will check if the image it has already existed in the in the cache. If it not, it will try to use the CDN feature to catch the image from the outside 
uh, image registry like Harbor. Uh, after it finished cast images, it will try to reply to the requesting node. Uh, I have I have already had the had the file. Then then the host the host the agent will know oh the super node has already cast the, the image. Then it will try to get the one block of the image from the super node to the to 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 the node itself, and uh, and for the other peers it will do the same same thing. Then. Uh, after afterwards, and the whole network, the whole P2P network will finish the whole pooling when all the blocks have downloaded to each node. So it is a very brief workflow of Dragonfly. And here, uh, when we are a little bit familiar with the Dragonfly's workflow, here is the uh, Dragonfly um, architecture. Hi. So, so, sorry to interrupt, just, just a quick it's question. Okay. So, um, so if I understand this correctly, effectively the 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 Docker daemon or the pouch D is is pulling through the various proxies to to effectively get the images. Um, is is it just Docker or pouch D? Um, I think you mentioned container D as well. Is is that supported too? Yeah, of course. Uh, container D is supported as well. And, uh, here we have uh, ecosystem integration. Um, this, this, this picture we have that container D can be supported. It is very easy. So we can configure the proxy proxy configuration of the container D to make it a point to the uh, DF daemon address. Then the DF daemon can get the image pulling request and it will intercept it to the DF get. Then, if the request has been has been sent to the DF get, it will be a generic uh, file pulling request. Understood. And the 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 top level um, registry. So so in these in these diagrams, it's it's shown as being Harbor, but I'm 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 assuming it doesn't have to be Harbor. It could be any registry, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be any registries. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I have a question. Uh, so okay. Does the CDN caching service operate at the granularity of files or blocks? Uh, or... Oh, you. Uh, okay, just a moment. Yeah. I'm wondering if I understand your question clearly. You mean that uh, the super node, which policy is used in the super node to cast the images, block or the files, right? So yeah, like does the caching system, does it cache images at the granularity of files or is it actually, does it at the granularity of blocks and blocks can be shared among multiple images so you get more savings? Okay, okay. Actually, Supernode is only used to cache files. So image can be regarded as one specific kind of uh, file. I see. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so if anyone have questions, uh, uh, have thoughts on Dragonfly, you can feel free to uh, to interrupt me to ask the questions. And here is the architecture of Dragonfly. Uh, actually, uh, we have a cluster. In this cluster, we can deploy uh, super node in a high availability mode. So in this picture, you can see two super node. And uh, the super node provides the CDN features and the P2P scheduling features. Uh, uh, under the under the super node, you can see um, the super and uh, the the DF get the agent will construct a peer network to uh, to 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 pull the files at the same time. So we can see a P two P network. So this is a very brief architecture of Dragonfly, and uh, we can talk it later. And here is a. Uh, a uh, uh, much more specific uh, architecture of uh, Dragonfly Supernode. Actually, Supernode provides the uh, API abilities for callers to control which kind of work to do. And above, uh, above the P uh, API, we can see the P2P schedulers. In P2P schedulers, uh, we provide lots of uh, uh, 
uh, scheduling policies. These policies will be introduced later through the, the, the sparseness, the proximity, back-to-back -back affinity, and the self-isolation. Maybe you are not familiar with that, but we can, uh, we can share that later. And the CDM manager, the CDM manager will do uh, three parts. And it will download the files from the source, from the registry. And uh, it, uh, in addition, it will uh, catch the things. It will try to compress the file to improve the efficiency, to reduce the storage size. And uh, it will also encrypt the data, encrypt the files. Uh, besides the CDM managers, there is a transmission part. The transmission part will try to try to configure the rate rate limit of the each task pulling task. Uh, it will control. Uh, it will control the 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 uploading uh, uploading tasks on the super node because lots of uh, lots of requests are coming from the agent to pulling request, but uh, the super node still need to guarantee it can provide the fixed. Uh, uh, abilities to for other services, and it provides the uh, sets the sets determination for the for the files. Uh, when every task comes to the super node, uh, super node super node will try to uh, cut the file into many old blocks. But uh, what's the size of the what's the size of the block it should be? Uh, it is decided by the by this part. And uh, it will encrypt the data as well. For the preheater, heater part, uh, preheater part is used for uh, for the fail 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 prevent or preheating. Uh, just uh, just uh, takes the uh, harbor integration as an example. Uh, when harbor send a request to the super node preheat API, the super node will 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 reflect or will react to download the files from the harbor, download the images from the harbor to cache them into the CDM manager. Then when every, every node tries to send, send the same image uh, pulling request, the super node, uh, there is no need for the super node to download the file or images from all sources. It can uh, directly to to, to, to schedule the uh, image pulling request among the peer networks. So it can reduce some time for the users. And this is the usage of preheater. And uh, at the bottom of this picture is the storage manager. Uh, here is some element which, is, which we need to store. The first one is blocks, block data. Uh, Block, uh, uh, it's very easy because in P2P network, we try to distribute a small, smaller blocks. So for a single file, if it is very large, so we need to divide it, divide it, we need to cut it into uh, many blocks. The block data should be, should be stored and uh, should be managed by the store, storage manager. And the metadata, metadata uh, is some, uh, some kind of uh, uh, assistant uh, uh, data like the MD5 data, like the, like the checksum or something like that. And the file link data. File link data is, yeah, someone, someone uh, has questions. Uh, oh, I, I was just going to ask a quick question there. Th that block data, how, how is it determined um, to be sort of in sync between the different P2P nodes? Do, do the blocks have some sort of um, have some sort of checksums and and do you use something like a Merkle tree or something like that to to diff the files between the nodes? Okay, so you mean what's the policy to judge the size of the blocks, right? No, not the policy to to judge the size of the blocks. So the, the the question is more along the lines of how how do you compare how how do you determine if the different P two P nodes actually have the correct file, or if the file has any changes, are, are the blocks checksummed in some way? Can can they be compared between the, the source and the destination? Okay, so different nodes. Uh, if the different nodes want to want to pull the same file, but the file has changed, right? 
So what's the what... so so for for example, just as an example, if if okay. uh, if a P two P node crashes, for example, um, yeah. while it's in the middle of downloading some blocks, how how does it know whether it's got valid blocks or corrupted blocks or or, or something like that, for example? Okay. 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 Uh, okay. Uh, if a node cra crashes, uh, we have we provide some policies to make the make the mechanism still work. Um, uh, if a uh, if a node crash crashes and uh, um, there will be some mistake in the class, there will be there will be some mistake data in the cluster. The first one is that. Uh, if the if the node uh, has already downloaded some blocks, these blocks cannot uh, provide the uploading services for other uh, other agents. This is the first part. The second part is that uh, the the blocks uh, the blocks the data uh, they have already exist in the agent, but the super node has a scheduled scheduled data of these blocks. These blocks should be uh, corrected. Corrected. Uh, then, uh, for the for the for the second second part, the data uh, will be corrected because uh, when the node crashes, then the heartbeat of the supernode and the supernode and the the, the agent uh, fails. Then it will um, the supernode will try to regard the agent as a value one, then it will mark the data, the blocks in this, this node should be, should be uh, marked as uh, unavailable. So, so as a, as a peers, we will try to, uh, as a super node, we will try to schedule another node which has the corresponding uh, blocks on the value node for other agent to, to, uh, to, to serve. Yeah, this is the first part. And uh, oh, this is the second part. The first part is that uh, when, uh, when it, uh, it fails, uh, the, the, the another peer tries to access the uh, uh, block data from this, this node and it will fail. It will fail when uh, the failure, failure, failure times will, uh, will increase up to the fixed number. It will try to report to the situation to the to the to the super node, then, then the super node will reschedule this pulling image clock uh, task for this node, and this is for the first part. Okay, so I mean that that seems like a fairly sophisticated um, kind of retry and and rescheduling kind of policy for 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 when there's a crash, but um, ultimately, is the data on disk um, protected by some sort of checksum or some hash or something so that you know that you've got the correct data and it hasn't been sort of tampered or it hasn't been corrupted in some way? Okay. Uh, yes, actually, uh, in our plan, in our roadmap, we are trying to make the, uh, we actually, this is our mechanism. When we use a CDN, CDN feature to cache the file. Uh, when we have finished uh, downloading the file, we will try to encrypt it. Then, after we encrypted this file, we will cut it into blocks. So when we try to distribute the blocks, actually the blocks is also uh, the block is one part of the encrypted file, right? Then it, when we distribute it to the to the node, actually when the when the when the agent when the node uh, receives the block, the block is also encrypted. When 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 uh -huh. the when the node try to reorg the reorg the file, it will uh, reorg 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 the blocks into a uh, encrypted file. Then it will try to unencrypted this file. I see. I see. Okay. So so effectively. The encryption is used as a way of validating that the file is correct. Yeah, I, I think so. All right. Well, okay. I think 
I, I think if you decrypt a, a corrupted encrypted file, you just get a corrupted decrypted file. It doesn't tell you it's corrupted necessarily. I, yeah. I don't, yeah. So, so I think we still, uh, if I, I, I understand Alex's question, I believe, and I, I don't think it's been answered yet. So maybe we can take that offline. Um, I had another question, and my apologies, I joined the call late. Um, there's talk of a peer-to-peer -peer network, but then it sounds like everything actually gets downloaded through the super nodes. Is that right? So does all, if a client is downloading an image, um, is, it, is all the data flowing through the super node? Uh, actually, no. Uh, actually, not all the data is from the super node. Super node. Uh, uh, when a node try to, uh, when, uh, for example, when ten nodes want to download the same image, uh, then the super node will will cast the image, and it will first it will schedule one block to one node. Then it will uh, record. It will record that one block there in the pure network. There already is two node has the has the block, the the node one and the super node, and it will try to schedule another node's pulling request to download the block from the node one. Then after the, in this mechanism, and uh, and it will try to use the pure network to distribute the blocks. Okay, so so the the clients ultimately pull the data off the P2P network nodes, not off the super node. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, thank that's you. Correct. Okay. And here, uh, at first, uh, and Alex introduced uh, uh, maybe Dragonfly, uh, maybe SIG storage is the best SIG group for, uh, to relate to with Dragonfly. I had some slides to introduce some, some, some storage part of Dragonfly. Uh, we can divide into uh, Dragonfly's uh, ability into two parts, the CDN part and the, the P2P part. The CDN part, we will first, we will try to download the file. And uh, after we download it, we try to transform it. Uh, in this part, in this phase, we will compress the, compress the uh, file and uh, encrypt it. The compressed phase is used to improve the the, the distribution uh, efficiency and the encrypt part is uh, to guarantee security. After we transformed it, uh, we try to store it. Uh, when we store it, we will try to cut the cut the files into block blocks blocks, and uh, we will try to use our encapsulation protocol to add some headers for each 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 block. Uh, in addition, we provide a storage interface and uh, we can try to store the blocks in local file system or some in memory file system or some third part uh, uh, storage services. This is the CDN part. And uh, I try to introduce some uh, storage related uh, parts uh, with us. The second part is the P2P phase. Uh, the P2P phase, the first one is how to transport and then uh, it can consist of three, three, three steps. The first one is how to construct the P2P network, how to emit the P2P network. And every node will try to register it as a peer in the super node. And the second part is that when lots of nodes uh, wish to pull the same request, pull the same image, uh, the super node, how to schedule uh, actually, uh, for the questions, I have already introduced some details about the scheduling system. Uh, when the scheduling scheduling result exists and uh, pro produces, uh, the node will try to implement. Uh, try to the node will try will try to execute the downloading, uh, the detailed downloading parts uh, for the blocks, and this is the transport part. The Second is that uh, how to do the IO control. IO control can be taken can be taken effected onto uh, two nodes, two kinds of nodes. The super node will do the IO control, and uh, the agent will will be taken effect as well. The third, second part is um, uh, the, the the data reorg. The data reorg. Uh, the first part is. Uh, 
when all the blocks has already a C has already been received uh, on the node, uh, we should try to make the block re um, try to make the blocks uh, right on the disk. And this part we will uh, we will use some algorithm to improve the efficiency. Uh, for example, uh, because uh, every block has a has has its own uh, position of the file. So when we write the blocks into the disk, we try to find some 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 blocks nearby, and uh, we try to uh, write uh, some a bunch of uh, blocks uh, who are nearby uh, into the disk. It will try to make the disk writing uh, to reduce some time cost, and we will try to check the check the file and uh, the check the file check part will consist of two parts uh, when we the first one is the block checking uh, when the block is uh, is 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 not correct is not correct then the then the whole downloading task could be regarded as a failure so we can return fast so we can adopt uh, the whole downloading task uh, when we when the block validation uh, is uh, is successful, then we will try to check in the file. Uh, after the file checking is okay, then uh, the file downloading is okay. Uh, for the Docker part, we will try to make the image file as a stream to 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 feedback to the container engine. And for the file, it is already a complete file which has already been distributed to the node file P2P. And uh, here is some uh, some procedure, some detailed uh, description uh, here. Uh, the procedure is in CDN. The first one is download. We can support the HTTP and the FTP. The com the, for the compress part, uh, we provide such kind of uh, mechanism. Um, the super node will try to do a sampling from the downloaded file. Uh, it will it will cut a sample from the file and do the, it, uh, it will try to, for the sampling file, uh, it will do the comp compress compression work. If the compression ratio is less than uh, 60%, it means that uh, it can guarantee the efficiency if we do the compress. So uh, the super node will do the whole file compress compress compression. Uh, and we provide the GZIP and the LZ4 policy to a uh, tool to do the compression work. And the, and the, and the third, third one is the encryption, encryption part. Uh, the first one is uh, we use the DS by default and then make the cache files encrypted on the super node. Uh, for the storage cut, we try to, uh, our policy is that super node will Cast blocks in range among uh, one megabyte and uh, fifteen megabyte. Uh, uh, in the at the bottom of the of the blocks, we have a picture. Uh, on the second part, we it show it shows four bits. Uh, four bits is used to identify the block size of the block. Uh, and and uh, uh, it's the structure of the. Um, blocks uh, organization. Uh, in the middle, it is uh, block data. And uh, on the left side, on the left side of the block data, it has uh, uh, 24 bits to identify the block data size and uh, three bit to reserved to be reserved and uh, one bit to to tier the tier others, it is uh, if it is uh, compressed and the four bit is used to identify the block size. And this is a, a very simply uh, encapsulation protocol of Dragonfly's block. Yeah. Um, um, uh, I, got, I got two questions. Um, the first one is how do you version this scheme? The second question is you give 24 bits for the block data size, but you only give four bits for the total size. It looks like 
the 24 bits can express more than like 15 megabytes, I believe. Okay, okay. I understand your second question. Uh, my first question is, uh, how do you evolve? Like this is a protocol, I believe. And uh, what if you want to change it? You may want to migrate from V1 to V2. There has to be a version bit, I guess. Okay. Yeah. So for uh, for the first question, you mean the uh, the API version of Dragonfly Super Node? So it looks like you're giving the block block data um, encapsulation protocol. Okay. I specifically mean the version of this schema. So first, the, the encapsulation protocols uh, version schema, if we have some upgrade from version one to version two? Right. Okay. If okay. you want, like if you want to add some new fields, new bits, that might be a future version. That's all possible, I feel. Uh, actually, we have considered these features into the design. Uh, you see three bit to be reserved. Actually, we can try to make, uh, take advantage of the, this rate bit to be uh, back compatible with the uh, with old version. Uh, this is uh, what uh, we desire. But actually, we currently provide only uh, such kind of a protocol. We, we have never do some protocol upgrade for it now, currently. This is uh, for the first question. Uh, I, I um, think I think the figure is not the uh, full protocol. It's only the payload. It, yeah, it describes only. the payload, whether it is uh, compressed or not, uh, how big is it, and uh, the, the ending. So it's not the full protocol. So, so um, I mean, may, maybe not all the information is here, but I am a... I'm, uh, you know, I've got a few questions to try and understand how how you would actually store this information because, um, you know, just having compressed on and off probably isn't enough to tell you if you're, say, compressing with two different algorithms like GZIP or LZ4. But also, you know, DES seems like quite an old encryption standard. Um, and what if you wanted to use a different encryption algorithm? How would you, how, how could you switch to that if you don't store the algorithm type? Okay. Okay, you mean how to or, change or, 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 or the version, for example, you know? Okay, uh, I'm wondering if I understand your question clearly. Uh, you mean, um, besides- well, so, 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 so the question is this, without storing some sort of version information, um, assuming the version has a link to, you know, specific compression types or specific encryption types, um, you can't really change any of those, any of those algorithms. Um, and it would seem to me that, for example, because you use DES for encryption, which to be honest is is fairly old, it's about 20 years out of date at this stage. Um, you know, if somebody wanted to switch to something else like AES, for example, um, I, I don't see how you would be able to do this without rewriting the on-disk format. Okay. Okay, actually, yeah, what you mentioned is correct. Is correct. Uh, actually, we uh, we haven't taken that into consideration with, uh, into our design. Uh, we assume we assume that the users will try to use the fixed two uh, compression algorithms. So this is a good good question. Um, uh, later, we will we will uh, we will think think about it. And we will try to find the solution to solve it. Thank you for the question. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any questions here? 
Okay, let's next. Let's go next. And here is the uh, uh, P2P part and uh, the procedures in, in P2P. The first one is the scheduling part. And uh, we have provided some policies here. And the first one is the sparseness, uh, spar sparseness. and uh, the super node will schedule the most sparse uh, block among the P2P network first. It means that if we have block one, uh, we have already uh, cut the files into uh, many blocks. In these blocks, we have a block one. And uh, after some time's uh, distribution, uh, actually the block one block is only uh, existing on node, node one. Then uh, we can regard it as the most sparse block. This block one could be, could be regarded as the most sparse block then the, the supernode will schedule these blocks first because we try to make the blocks uh, leverage the two on the two among the peer network. Then uh, on, an, on a node, it will have more possibilities to have the complete blocks of the files. Then it will it will reorg the files uh, to reduce more time cost. And the second policy is uh, affinity. Uh, the affinity part we can uh, we can understand it like this: the supernode will the supernode will choose the best network condition node to schedule the schedule the the, the block. For example, uh, ten ten node will try to ten node will try to pull the block from the supernode. But the network condition among the 10 nodes, they are very different. And the supernode will try to find the best network condition node. And it will schedule the blocks to this, um, this node. And uh, the third one is the CF isolation policy. Uh, it means that never to schedule one node if it's already failed to schedule once. Uh, actually, the, the once or twice the time can be can be configured. Uh, so, if um, the network issues uh, the network issues uh, fail, the network issue the network fails or this node crashes, uh, like 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 just uh, mentioned in one question, uh, the node will be do the self isolation and uh, the super node will not uh, schedule this node. And the workload control. The workload control is very, uh, is very easy. Uh, the supernode will limit the parallel piece task capacity dynamically. Uh, if the supernode's workload uh, is very large, then it will dynamically limit the task capacity. And for the agent, it also can, it also can control the numbers of task pullings, but it's not related to the uh, super node scheduling. The second part is downloading. Uh, for the downloading part, uh, it is uh, regarding, uh, uh, it is related with the uh, DF get with the agent. Uh, the agent can dynamically adjust uh, downloading options. Uh, it can dynamically configure the polling, um, the image downloading timeout. Uh, some cases, uh, block downloading should be filled after several timeouts, uh, but it can uh, dynamically uh, to dynamically configure uh, the timeout to be a large number. Then it can still work because sometimes uh, network could be could be under some poor network conditions, and uh, the I/O control. Uh, we can provide the net I/O bandwidth uh, limit, and we can limit the disk I/O. Uh, uh, for the disk write part, uh, the first one is that we provide the position block uh, offset, um, uh, just like what I mentioned last just now. Uh, when a file is finished, when a file, uh, when all the blocks of a file is uh, are finished uh, downloading from from the peer network to a node, and um, the the agent the DF get 
should try to uh, combine all the blocks into one node. But uh, uh, actually every block has their fixed position, has, the, has its own offset of the file. Then we should uh, try to find the position of the block offset and uh, combine the, uh, the nearby blocks together and uh, try to make it, uh, make, make them together to be returned uh, into the disk. Uh, this kind of action should, could, be, uh, could uh, reduce the time cost when we uh, combine the blocks into a, into a file. And uh, it can schedule block write sequence to reduce uh, disk write time cost. And the file check. The file check part is that uh, after a super, after an agent uh, finishes to downloading one block, it will try to validate the, 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 the checked block. If it fails, it can uh, fail fast. It, uh, there is no need to download other blocks. And uh, after we combine all the blocks into one single file, we should try to check the files. And we should check the integrity of the file. And this is the P2P part and the, some storage related details. Thank you. This is this is um, this is really useful. Um, is there much? Is there a lot left to the presentation? Pardon? Is, is there a lot left for the presentation? Lot left. It, it, are are there many more slides? More slides? Yes, we have lot more slides. Yeah. Okay. Okay, because I I think we're running out of time, so we. We might need to. Um, okay. Only might... a few slides left. Only a few slides left. Slides left. Okay. We are having three, okay. three, three slides. Okay. okay. Excellent. Okay. And this part is uh, talking about the Dragonfly's cloud native ecosystem. Actually, Dragonfly has uh, has succeeded in uh, integrating with Dragonfly, uh, integrating Dragonfly with some cloud native projects. The first one is the Prometheus. Um, the super node provides the metrics API for the Prometheus to collect metrics, and it can send the metrics to the graph now to do the dis uh, displaying uh, work. And uh, the second one is Container D. Actually, we all know that Container D is one CNCF graduation project, which is a container engine. And uh, actually, Dragonfly can be easily to integrate with the container engine. The third part is the Hubber. Uh, Hubber with Dragonfly can collaborate in image prefetch and it can improve the efficiency when we, when uh, all the nodes try to pull the images. And the uh, Dragonfly Super Node can be installed as, can be installed as a wizard film chat. Actually the node, the agent of the dev get could be deployed as a Kubernetes daemon, daemon set. So this is the integration of Dragonfly with cloud native ecosystem. And here is the industry adoptions. Actually, we are very lucky to see lots of uh, a variety of industries they are using Dragonfly in their production environment. The first one is the telecom and the communication uh, industry. Uh, we have uh, China Mobile, uh, China Unicom, Huawei, and the ZTE, they are using Dragonflies. Uh, for the second part, the e-commerce, uh, e-commerce e e e e e companies, they, uh, usually they have large scale uh, clusters uh, and they are taking advantages of container. They are, have large scale, they will easily met the uh, distribution issues. So Taobao.com in China and uh, JD.com in China, and uh, Shopee, this company is in Singapore of East Asia. And the Lazida Group, they are also using Dragonfly to make it. The cloud service providers uh, and uh, Alibaba, DaoCloud, SciCloud, and uh, West2C, they are using Dragonfly to provide uh, distribution services for their customers. For some live streaming companies, Huya.com, Bilibili, they are using, they are using it. And uh, Meituan, Erlema, Didi, Chuna, they are also very famous public live service providing 
uh, vendors in China. So actually, actually, lots of companies in China uh, they will match the image uh, distribution issues, and, uh, and of course, Dragonfly is, the, is their first choice. And uh, the, the the last one is the artificial intelligence company iFly Tech. They they are a very famous speech intelligent speech intelligence companies in China. They also use Dragonfly to distribute very very large uh, images. Usually, they, their learning, their images is larger than uh, is larger than twenty gigabytes. And here is the roadmap of Dragonfly. Uh, first is the feature. Uh, we will try to make the Supernova HA to be to be more mature. And uh, uh, actually, you you will see Dragonfly to deploy Dragonfly. We still need to deploy a supernode or two supernodes to provide the HA. But how about decentralized scheduling? How about make the uh, scheduling ability to exist in each node? This is an uh, eBay's concept. Uh, eBay, they are providing the P2P, uh, P2P distribution abilities without deploying a super node. We will say we will try to make the, every, every agent to record the scheduling system and uh, uh, try to make the agents uh, self governing the distribution data. And uh, eBay's maintainer is to design this part and try to make it and some flexible plugin framework, enhanced encryption, more file transfer protocols. And uh, in addition, we try to, we hope we could provide the, a very good Dragonfly UI to, to be user friendly. Uh, for the scenarios, actually we, currently we provide the Dragonfly in some online business on physical machines, but uh, actually we found that uh, we should do some optimizations when our environment changes from the physical machine to cloud disk. So the I/O condition and the network condition uh, may uh, can be totally different from the physical machine. Uh, we will try to do the performance optimization, and uh, actually we got lots of uh, uh, feature demand from the IoT scenarios. Uh, lots of devices they try to distribute builds the data actually distribution is the most important, most, most challenging parts of the scenarios. And we provide uh, more computing act architecture. For the ecosystem, uh, actually now, Dragonfly's uh, observ observability is not so good. So we will try to uh, support tracing in Dragonfly. And uh, we will try to make the uh, operation of Dragonfly in Kubernetes ecosystem very easily. So uh, in our roadmap, uh, operator support is one part. And uh, in addition- I'm so, uh, Sorry to interrupt. Um, I think we're out of time now. Um, Alex, I was wondering, ha have we got any um, tech lead volunteers to lead the um, due diligence for this? Um, we haven't discussed this yet, but we could, we could discuss okay. that fine. Okay. Actually, actually, uh, we are wishing to get some feedback from the SIG storage. And uh, Li Xiang won TOC from the TOC members, and uh, he is willing to do some due the gene diligence of it of Dragonfly. So, so I think, um, and and Quentin, please feel free to interject here. I I, I think. We'll, some of the next steps are we'll, we'll collate some of the information and any other questions that we have. Um, but we're also, uh, we'll also need to probably speak to um, two or three of the users of Dragonfly to, to sort of better understand how they're using it in production and their use cases and that sort of thing, because that, that, that's required for the due diligence. Um, Anything else that that is important for the next steps, Quinton? Uh, no, no. I just I just wanted to I guess make it clear that we're sort of on the hook for a deep dive into all of this stuff, including the users. But uh, you know, set it up, test it, uh, look at all the details, um, and uh, and yeah, we, we sort of need to need to get that started soonish. 
Yes, definitely. So, so right. I tell you what, we'll 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 start scheduling this. Um, we'll start scheduling this over email if that's okay, Alan. Sounds good. All right. Thank you okay. so much for the thank you so much for the presentation, and we'll we'll okay. get back to you shortly. Okay. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Quinton. All right. Okay. We used to get your feed, feedback soon. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much. Okay. See you. Bye bye. Bye-bye.